expressed by callers, guests, and hosts do not necessarily reflect those of the Black Talk Radio Network and Black Talk Media Project. Black Talk Radio is new black media for the new millennium. Dinar would have had serious consequences for the world financial system, but may also have empowered the people of Africa, something black activists say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We're slicing cake. We're slicing cake. We're slicing cake. Say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We're slicing cake. Say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We're slicing cake. Gaddafi didn't give up. In the months leading up to the military intervention, he called on African and Muslim nations to join together to create this new currency that would rival the dollar and euro. They would sell oil and other resources around the world only for gold dinars. It's an idea that would shift the economic balance of the world. Countries' wealth would depend on how much gold they have, not how many dollars they trade. And Libya has 144 tons of gold. Welcome, welcome everyone to Tando Radio Show, brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. I'm your host, Dave from L.A., coming to you live from FEMA region number six. Today is April the 25th, 2017. We have a live show for you today. Looking forward to it all. If you'd like to get in on the conversation, don't hesitate. Give us a call at 866-510-9025. 866-510-9025. That would be the number for you to call in if you'd like to express. If you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you because a dialogue is much more important than a monologue. On today's show, if you hear some background noise, excuse me, I actually have to meet some clients uh, this evening, and I needed to still do today's show, so I'm doing it in transit, so just bear with me. I uh, wanted to make sure we had a show today because it's very, very important. So try, trying to keep, uh, you know, what we got going because it's very, very important for the times that we're in. So if you'd like to get in on the conversation, definitely give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025, and just hit star start. So before we get started in today's show, as usual, ladies and gentlemen, make sure that you are supporting Black Talk Radio Network, and you can very easily do that by going to www.blacktalkradionetwork.com. That's www the blacktalkradionetwork.com and there you'll find on the website you'll find the donation prompt that's right there on the home page in green and white the holding hands that are there just hit that prompt and just hit that icon and it will lead you into how you can give some of your financial energy to the network so that this network can continue to grow and bring you what you have considered extremely valuable make sure ladies and gentlemen if you've been partaking from black talk radio network and all of the programs that are brought to you by black talk radio network give some of your donations this is the difference between successful uh, ventures and non-successful ventures. It requires the energy of everyone so that we can get where we need. And you know what? It's so important because you never know what Black Talk Radio Network is going to offer you in the future. You may be in a, in a position of great need, and because Black Talk Radio Network is here, it was able to provide that. Don't wait until you need something before you want to support it. Make sure that you're supporting it because you realize the overall importance of the need of its existence. So give some whatever you can. All donations are greatly appreciated. Also, you can support Black Talk Radio Network as well by becoming part of BTR community. And you can find that on the website for Black Talk Radio Network as well by simply, uh, it's right there on the uh, home page as B uh, Black Talk Radio Network is known as BTR, and you can find it at www.blacktalk. Excuse me, BTRcommunity.com. One more time, that's www.btrcommunity.com. What is this? 
This is a social media network that Black Talk Radio Network has put together for your overall social engagement so that you can engage in your social, your regular social media um, activities. You can do it with uh, BTR, and this is going to put you in a better position because your overall <clears throat> identity will not be sold or you won't be adversely affected because of what you're posting, what you're promoting. And on BTR, you can promote yourself, your business, uh, another business or some events or something that you think is relevant and needs to have more public exposure or something that you think people should know. You could do that very easily by being a part of BTR community for only $24 a year. And with that $24 a year, you have access to, to everything. And I no longer post inside a fed book or I don't tweet and I don't snap no chat because uh, that's all snitching. You're telling on yourself. So definitely engage in BTR community, um, and that is a more holistic way for us to commune, especially for what's going on in the future. And as I was telling you, everyone that's listening to Tando Radio Show, all of, all of our faithful listeners, you need to be establishing preparedness groups with your friends and your family wherever you are in this country because of what is going to be happening. It's not hard to do. It's something that you should be doing. And if you want to talk about that and want to get some ideas of how to start that, you can call here at BT, at uh, Black Talk, excuse me, at Tando Radio Show at any time, any day, any time that we're on. That takes precedence over everything else. Because if you're not prepared, then that means your family's not prepared. And if your family's not prepared, that means our community is not prepared. And if our community is not prepared, we will continue to have the prosperity loss that we've had in the past. So be a part of it at any time. If you would like to know how to start some of your preparedness groups with your friends and family, where you are, call into the show today. Call into the show tomorrow. Call in the show throughout the week until you get that done. And that will not get done until you take a proactive approach to it all. So give us a call at 866-510-9025, and we will definitely assist you and help you with facilitating that. Okay? Also, if you would like to acquire precious metals or save as a king or a queen or save as a lady and a gentleman, and that would be by you saving in real money, you can do that by going to Prosperity Mint. That's uh, Prosperity Mint is P R O S P E R I T Y M I N T dot com, and there you can check out what's in inventory. With everything is you know pretty much have access to everything, and if uh, what you want to do is just to, before you purchase there at uh, Prosperity Mint, make sure you email me or you text me. You can text me at 951-790-8330 and just say, hey, Dave, interested in acquiring some of the precious metals, um, and then we will get back to you as soon as soon as possibly can. Also, you can reach us at wolf6pack1 at gmail.com, wolf6pack1 at gmail.com. This is going to be one of the critical elements that you're going to need in the future to be able to get through the, the overall adversity. You know, it's so funny. I always hear people say, now, when it comes to what, how you want to get through a currency crisis is that you want to have asset, assets so that when the wealth, transfers, wealth, transfer, wealth transfer happens, that it will make sure that it transfers wealth to you because you will be put in a position of advantage to seize on that. Now, what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be giving classes, and the classes for the precious metals and preparedness is going to be $40 a month, and we will give them. We're going to start in May, um, and we'll have uh, two classes um, a month, um, but first and foremost, we're going to start off with uh, preparedness because that's where you need to start, and then we'll, we'll interchange them, and it, it'll be a collaborative effort for the precious metals and preparing. So we'll be doing that in May, and it's going to be $40 a month. So you can um, sign up. Um, we're going to be giving you further information. But if you want accelerated classes of the precious metals, then that is going to, that's $400 for four classes, one hour uh, long, basically $100 a class. And that's where you'll be, uh, we'll learn in a, in a very fast ma uh, manner in, in a um, way how to, to properly purchase the metals as far as how to leverage it for 
how to properly leverage it. Excuse me, gain interest off of it. You will learn the um, historical uh, importance of it all and why that is. And because I always say, if you don't know what you have, you won't have it for long. And you need to learn, in my opinion, and it did for me, you need to really know what it is that you have so that you can properly position yourself for this wealth transfer. So that is for the accelerated classes. That's uh, $400 for four classes. It's going to be there one hour long. And definitely uh, you can reach out to us to, to start that. The same uh, way that you reach out to Prosperity Mint, you can text me, 951-790-8330, or email wolf. Six pack one at gmail.com. Okay, so with that being said, let's get into what's in the news. And we're going to start. First article that we posted for what's in the news comes from Reuters. U.S. submarine makes South Korean port call. North remains defiant. And that comes from Reuters. A nuclear power U.S. submarine made up, made a port call in South Korea on Tuesday, today. And the show of force and amidst the concerns that North Korea may mark the may mark the foundation of mili- of its military with a massive launch of a nuclear test defying u s and Chinese pressure. The Porter call was made by the u s s Michigan came as the u s is can't see the rest of it, but let me tell you about the uh, the USS Michigan is able to use cruise missiles attack from that to everything is setting up, ladies and gentlemen. So that check out that article. Next article from Reuters. It says only foreign currency, please. The cost of reporting from North Korea. Check out that article to see what uh, North Korea has has allowed um, some foreign reporters to come in and what they're charging them to do that. Check out that article. Next article, very, very important one. Will China lead banks? Will China lead banks get covered, excuse me, get converted boost to shape new world order? Yes. China is going to be the overall economic beacon for the world for the next 70 or 80 years, starting is already started. China will be the the economic beacon that the rest of the world will follow for the next 80 or or 75 years. And and that process is already started. So check this out. It says two two development banks established under Beijing's leadership, widely seen as China's tool to help shape a new financial world order, are seeking rates from international rating agencies. And they are going to definitely rate them I would love to take to, to to jump into this. This means, ladies and gentlemen, as we've been so telling you, to prepare yourself for this economic crisis and economic collapse of the American or or the the U.S.'s um, hegemony on the economic system. It's going to lose the petrodollar status. It's going to lose the reserve currency status, and it's going to lose its its confidence from the rest of the world to to believe that the U.S. is the economic uh, giant that can pay its bills. Once they lose confidence, it's because the U.S. has defaulted on its debt, which it already has in numerous occasions, but the major default is going to be coming, and the ones that's going to be bailing out and bailing by bail-in of the U.S. economy is going to be its everyday citizens, you, the taxpayers. That's who is going to be... That's who is going to be set up for this great economic fall. So check out that article. Next article comes from Sputnik. Important partner, China invites Egypt to attend One Belt, One Road Forum. China foreign minister met with the Egyptian count, his Egyptian counterpart and invited your, uh, Egypt's delegates to take part in the upcoming summit summit on international cooperation within the frameworks of One Belt, One Road initiatives in Beijing, China. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the, the economic direction in the overall trade agreement of the new Silk Road. That is going to, and believe me, the U.S. will be excluded from that, or if the U.S. will have any inclusion, it will have marginal inclusion by way of some of its states or some of its former states that have 
seceded from the United States, the untied states of America, is where we're, where we're going. And this is going to be replacing the rest of the world will continue to engage and create an economy that most corporation or most people or the, the corporation of the United States will be excluded from or will not be given a significant role, but will be significant from the standpoint that they will be actually energizing, labor force energizing the overall deals and profits that will be made, but none will be shared with the U.S. at all. Very, very critical. Next article. Oh, and before we go further, you know, Scotty was, um, we were talking just before the start of Tando uh, radio show, and Scotty was talking about Rex Til- Tilford, Til- Tillerson, excuse me, Rex Til- Tillerson had, was accusing Russia of arming the Taliban. And I'm going to tell you, this is all a part of the purge and the overall war agenda, ladies and gentlemen. These are fighting words because when you're broke, you have to go to war with your lender when you're a sovereign nation especially if you are a significant sovereign nation that has been, that your overall economy was artificially being built up by its military threats, its, its stealing of resources, its creating uh, the economic uh, chain that where you're always the middleman, and now because of that, they're cutting that middleman out, and that is going to starve that middleman because that middleman has established a quality of life and standard of living around that. And ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be repossessed. So you want to make sure that you're not on the downside of that. Next article comes from Sputnik News. And before we get go any further, I can't see the board, ladies and gentlemen. So if you do call in today, please make sure you just let me know that you're there. Um, just by, you know, just, you know, a little excuse me or, or, or something. You let me know that you're there. Um, and then I will see you and go to you. Um, I can't see the board, so just be mindful of that. Um, So don't, if you wanted to have, if you have a question or comment, uh, you would definitely want to make yourself known because I won't be able to see you at all, okay? All right, so we continue to go on. From Sputnik News, uh, my my MasterCard, Russia payment card is about to go global. And why is Russia about to have a MasterCard that's going to be used internationally? Well, here it is. Russia's National Payment Card Center um, system and MasterCard are holding negotiations on a code badge card called the, the My Card, My MasterCard. Newspaper uh, said on Tuesday, citing bank officials, according to the media, and MasterCard will produce about 40, uh, 40 million cold badge cards if the outcome of the negotiations are positive. Ladies and gentlemen, that's because they are going to replace what you have been using throughout your, your lives and known as the overall economic giants and economic powers of the, the past. The U.S. will lose, is, in my opinion, the U.S. will lose is G7 position and is G20 position. So, check out that article. Next article, this uh, next one is going to be a video that we're going to play. It's like one minute long uh, here from uh, C- uh, YouTube from C-SPAN. Next one is uh, from Sputnik News. Can we fix Finns parties hope to lure fleeing voters with Eurozone res- uh, withdrawal? The Eurozone is falling apart. Um, well, the, uh, yes, the, the EU is definitely economically falling apart. Next article comes from the Global Times, uh, .cn, and I'm going to have to pull this one up really quickly because I couldn't see it as well. And this one, this one comes from the Global Times. Trump can't alienate China-Russia ties. Very, very important. So I'm going to just uh, read this first paragraph. Seeking... Since taking the office, U.S. celebrity figurehead Donald Trump has been attempting to adjust the relationship among China and the U.S. and Russia. He claimed early in his campaign trail that China, rather than Russia, <clears throat> that is the principal threat to the U.S., and Washington should improve ties with Moscow. Trump's foreign policy is not about 
adjusting the U.S. relation, the U.S.-Russian relationship, but more about changing the whole world order formed under the presidency of his predecessor, George W. Bush, Barack Obama, where China and Russia strategically supported each other to balance the U.S. Not going to break, be able to break that bond. But I do see in the future, and you heard it here first, that after the overall war with the United States, after the United States will surrender, that not too far after that, maybe a couple of years after that, that, that there is a possibility that China and Russia will go to war as well. So that's just how history goes. So check out that article. Next article, also from the globaltimes.cn. This one is Belt and Road being, oops, Belt and Road brings balloon for satellite service. I'm talking about the one belt, one road. Check out that article. Very, very telling as to where things are going and what you can expect. Next article from the South China Morning Post. Is the Philippines offering Beijing olive branch over the South Sea of China? Of course, they're not stupid. Next article from the South China Morning Post. Can Trump do anything to stop a war with North Korea? No. And it says, uh, the, the caption is, as his administration prepares to brief all 100 U.S. senators on the nuclear and ballistic missile program of North Korea, celebrity figurehead President Donald Trump continues to heighten tension along the Korean Peninsula in a way he cannot possibly control. And does Kim Jong, the crazed leader of North Korea, and I can't see the, the, the rest, so check out that article. Next article, man, this is a very, very important one. Don't, don't sleep on this one, must catch this one. South China Morning Post, how China has become America's equal as showcased at Harvard. No, China has surpassed America, for, and they've been past America. They sh they've actually became their equal a while ago when p pretty much when uh, Nick, uh, Nixon sent Kissinger over, over the cut the deal and China says, cool, well then send me your gold. This is all what I believe, but that's when they became the equal of the U.S. And when they started buying the U.S. debt, that's when they became equal. So check out that. Next one. This one from, from Raz. Japan prepares for a catastrophic North Korean missile strike. Got that one from the Times. So that is what's in the news, and that's where we're going to start today's today's uh show and at any time if you'd like to get in on the conversation don't hesitate give us a call 866-510-9025 866-510-9025 then hit star star we'll see you in queue and we'll bring you up so what what i want to do now there's a very important i want to start today's show with oops let me because that's all ready to go I want to play a video for you. So let me just set up here for this video. It's a very short video. Oops. It's a very short video. It's only about mm, about two minutes long. But I want you to really pay attention. This was from earlier this year. And what I love about Tando Radio Show is that you, the listeners, were actually actually are given a lot of information that the mainstream media doesn't want you to know or to be in, well, to have an, an awareness of. And we do that so that you can properly position yourself and your family. If you don't position yourself and your family because of that, that is absolutely your choice. That is your free will. I understand, and I get it. Not a problem. But we bring what we bring to you because we think it's valuable, and you have responded in a way that says that it is valuable and we truly truly appreciate and i thank you all for doing that and i know that we're definitely going to to really need to rely on each other as things start to further divest them uh, as they further uh, fall into uh crisis um situations we're going to have to re re rely on ourselves so what i want to do now there was a a senate hearing in the beginning of the year, you need to really hear about what was said and what does this mean. If there are family members that like to keep their Next head in the parents. sand and they're...
Just you know, you truly do care about them, and they're at least approachable about different things. This is some of the things that you should be giving them and let them make their own decision. Ask them a question. Now, what do you think they're talking about? What, what do you think they're talking about? Because I'm not quite sure. You, you ask them that, and then they'll tell you what they think. Okay? Very important. And I would say for people that you don't know, right now is not the time to try to, to get them prepared because – we are too close to too many things happening. So what I want to do, I want you to play, I'm going to play something. I want you to really, really pay attention. And if you'd like to call in after this, definitely do that. There, the number is 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025. So you got it all set up. Here we go. Let's play this. This is Lindsey Graham. Hold on. Oops. Okay. What's the chief driver of the debt? The entitlement programs, Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. Okay, the deficit and the debt are different things. Explain it very quickly, the difference between the deficit and the debt. The deficit is this year's um, shortfalls between revenues and expenditures. The debt is the accumulation of deficits over the years. The baby boom generation will be retiring in mass here. What happens to Medicare and Social Security over the next 25 years? They go up. Okay. In 1950, how many workers were there for every Social Security recipient? I think 15, 16 at some point. 16. How many are there today? Uh, three. How many will there be in 20 years? Uh, two. How can two people do what 16 people used to do? Um, short answer is that they can't. Are we living longer or shorter? Longer. So we're living longer, there are fewer workers, and more people are retiring. Those are the hard facts, yes, sir. Will you tell President Trump that it ignores that he can never get us out of debt? Yes, sir. Will you tell him that the promise you made about Medicare and Social Security is going to lead to their demise if you don't change that promise? Yes, sir. Will you tell him that there's a bipartisan way to do this? It's been studied extensively without gutting the program but saving the program? I'm familiar with that, yes, sir. Yeah. Would you agree with me that for younger workers... They may have to work longer before they enter the program to save the program. I've already told my children to prepare for exactly that. Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill adjusted the age of retirement from 65 to 67 to save Social Security. Is that accurate? That is true. Do you think we need to look at adjusting the age yet again because we live longer? I do, yes, sir. Do you think people in my income level should get a subsidy to pay their Medicare bills? I believe that uh, Medicare benefits should and could be means tested. Okay, so that was Lindsey Graham, and that was quite telling, saying that Social Security and Medicare is going to lead to the demise of the general population. This isn't conspiracy theory that we talk about here. We talk about the conspiracy agenda. These people always tell you what, their, what the plan is especially when it's too late for you to pro properly uh, respond. While everyone else is so concerned about irrelevant things, so concerned about maintaining the overall heading of the party is just beginning, begin, and it must continue to go on. Not even knowing that economically their demise is around the corner and has been planned for in the commission a hearing of budget, the the the, uh, the budget uh, director. That's the budget director speaking to Lindsey Graham, and I'm not a fan of Liz, Lindsey Graham at all. But one thing about it here is that Lindsey Graham did tell the truth, absolutely the truth. And the truth is that if you are depending on what you think is going to be coming and due to you from what you paid from in the past, austerity is going to, is going to be your new overall curse word. Because austerity is going to steal and take all of that away. And it is going to bring about the economic demise. Because as was said, there are there is only going to be 20 years from now is only going to be uh, with the comparable workforce as when the baby boomers were in the workforce as 
16, there will only be two people working. I actually say that there will be even more people working. There will be 100 people working more than the 16. But see, the thing is that the 16 will still have gotten paid more than the hundreds of people that will be working without getting any form of real payment. Their overall a nominal income will be far less than the 16 from the baby boomers. A, even from the baby boomers, just a, just taking three or five of those, the a nominal uh, wage uh, earnings will be less for 120 years from now, 15 years from now. Because right around that time, the U.S. will be fully engaged in trying to being forced to repay its overall war reparations, in my opinion. These people are telling you to. So if you, are, if you know people that's been having their head in the sand and they're, they're denying everything else, well, you know what's so funny about those type of people? They never believe anything because it's not comfortable to, to actually investigate anything. But see, when they do hear it, they say, nah, it'll never ha ha happen, but they never give you reason as to why it can't happen and why it's not happening. What substantiates and validates, and they just say, because I don't think it will. Well, it really doesn't matter what you think when someone else has created energy to go in a specific, di in a, a specific direction. But sometimes what happens in, on a wake-up call is that when they hear and they see the overall system of the ones that they've been fighting for and, and believe by, by marching and by voting and everything else, when they hear their so-called leaders, and isn't that crazy? The great creator made you to be led. What? Okay, David, keep going. When you see your, the, the your so-called electoral leaders tell you you're done for, then what, the, what would their response be? I'll tell you what their response would be. Oh, don't worry about it. They'll figure something out. Like he said, there's a solution to it. Yes, there is a solution to it. That solution is the fault. That is the solution. But with that solution is going to come the ramifications of that. So I'm not quite sure. Um, is Brother Braggs, Brother Braggs, you on the board? Okay, Brother Braggs is not there as of yet. Or if you are, Brother Braggs, uh, let me know uh, when you get on the board. So this is Good, where we are. I was trying to be quiet. Excuse me. I was just trying to be quiet until my neighbor cut this llama off. Uh... Okay, cool. No, 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 you good. I just wanted to know you were there because I, I wasn't, um, I, I couldn't see the board. So uh, glad to have you there, Brother. Okay, so yeah, yeah, take care and then and then come back in as soon as you uh, deem it ready. So, all right. Why is this why is this so important ladies and gentlemen because the promise of what you were told about your golden arches the the golden watch the golden parachute the retirement they're not just talking about so, social security and, and medicaid they're not just talking about that they're not just talking about the overall governmental entitlements the entitlement programs they're talking about the complete economy pensions and all savings, banking. There was an article, um, my, uh, the good sister Strategic Melanin posted uh, about Wells Fargo. Well, Wells Fargo had shareholders meetings today and they had to stop the shareholder meetings because they almost had fights breaking out there at the shareholders meeting. Wells Fargo is done. But it's not just Wells Fargo. It's all of the banks right now. They are strategically unwinding the banking system, strategically unwinding the economy, strategically unwinding the investment, the pension, strategically unwinding your standard of living and your quality of life. You have to get in front of that, excuse me with this plane. Dave, uh, Dave. If that is important to you. Yeah, go ahead, Scotty. Hey, I need to step out and help my sister for a minute. Uh, with her okay, car, you good. and um, so don't take the break till I come back. Okay, no problem. All right. So, if that's important to you, the only resolution for this is for you 
to do what's in the best interest of yourself, your family, and the overall community. Because the energy that you have been working and has have expended into this economic system, you will not be able to get that energy back. But the energy that you're expending now, you should be saving properly, and that should be saved in real assets, not in a de- depreciating debt instrument. Not in something that is going to not have any value or purchasing power. What difference does it make if you are paid 40, 50, 60, or 100, or 300, or a million dollars a year if a pack of gum is $105 for one pack of gum? It doesn't matter how much you make. It matters about what you control. The true measure of wealth is not in the cash that you hold, but the assets that you control. Because cash is not an asset. It's a liability. It is a liability. It takes your energy and gives that energy to someone else that controls assets. It's a deep, it's a position of the leverage. This is so important that we understand these things. So you heard right here, you heard him say, and I'm going to play it one more time just because. No, I think, let me see. No, I'm not going to play it again because I messed it up. <laughs> so, but it was so important that you hear what was really said. So, no, I got to play it again because it's just too important. Let me just read you this so that now that we've talked about it, so that you can actually. see what and hear it again let me see if I can replay this okay yeah I can okay hold on one second so now I want you to pay close attention and this is what today's show is all about and I forgot to give you the name of today's show sorry about that it is taking good measures of opportunity let's find you comp or fertility what does that mean you need to be taking good measures of these opportunities unless your whole economic engine is going to conk out and your ability at fertility is going to be gone. Going to be gone. You will have no good fortune. None whatsoever. So I'm going to play this again, but I want you to really, really, really pay attention now that we talked about it a little bit and hear what they're telling you. They are telling you what they're going to be doing to you. It's two minutes. Here we go. Chief driver of the debt. The entitlement programs, Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. The chief driver of the debt. The entitlement programs, Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. Okay. The chief driver of the debt. That's just one of the drivers of the debt. But let me tell you what that means, what's being said there. The U.S. on paper, what they admit to is being $20 trillion in debt, roughly about a hundred percent of their overall income goes out to debt okay the debt to income ratio is over a hundred percent unsustainable going to crash but in actuality their unfunded liabilities sorry about that everyone their unfunded liabilities is actually somewhere around 200 trillion to maybe four to seven hundred trillion dollars meaning doesn't matter you can't pay it and if you can't pay it this debt the harsh realities of default when you go into receivership means that you're going to lose your assets you're going to lose your overall your what you own is going to be foreclosed on what you own is going to be repossessed and since everyone here that has established themselves under the corporation of the citizenry of the of America. Your energy is one of the things that you own that is going to be repossessed from you, because the politicians and the system that has created debt that they don't have to pay, they make laws that they don't have to obey, and they declare wars that they don't have to fight. Who pays the debt? You do. Who has to obey the laws? You do. Who has to fight the wars that they declare? Your daughters. 
this is a critical fact. So that's the chief, chief driver of the debt. Not only that, this is not even speaking about the overall private side of the debt, but more importantly, the chief driver of the debt is the U.S. dollar being a debt instrument that is not a fiat of collateral. It's not based off of anything that has intrinsical value. It's all based off of force speculation, the force of forcing the petrodollar down different countries' throat, stealing of assets by colonizing by way of their military, the, the reserve currency status, making sure that every person that sells anything within the, within the overall global market has to first pay the middleman known as the Western banking elite. That's the chief, chief driver of the debt. Ownership is the chief driver of the debt. So listen up one more time. Okay, the deficit and the debt are different things. Explain it very quickly, the difference between the deficit and the debt. The deficit is this year's um, shortfalls between revenues and expenditures. The debt is the accumulation of deficits over the years. The baby boom generation will be retiring in mass here. What happens to Medicare and Social Security over the next 25 years? They go up. Okay. And I- now, when you talking about they go up, that means this. The overall responsibility to people goes up. That means that the overall payment to them goes up. What made us ever think that if you gave the financial markets and the financial market makers and the overall government entities your hard-earned energy, every two weeks you pay them now that they would later on fulfill the promise that they told you that they were going to do. Why in the world would you ever think that that was going to happen? Why? Because your uncle, your grandfather, and all of them had got their pension? But see, you didn't do the math. We didn't do the math because we haven't been taught to think on our own. We've always been taught to regurgitate what the schools have taught us. And if you do the math, if there's 20 people over here that's funding the bank, and later on, I mean, and then to your, to your left or to your right is only two people that's there, and they're of equal pay and of equal uh, financial abilities, which bank do you think is going to have more? The bank that has more people. Well, it works this way. Your uncle and, uh, and grandfather was paid because the baby boomers were working and that pyramid was working to where they could, 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 could get pay out. But now there's too many people. There's more people going to be taken from the Ponzi scheme and the pyramid scheme than is going to be coming in. And that means that it's broke. And it's been put it put together on a pyramid and Ponzi scheme so that it will strategically break at the appropriate time after everything has already been stolen from the people. So hear this again. Now listen. 1950. How many workers were there for every Social Security recipient? Like 15, 16 at some point. 16. How many are there today? Uh, three. How many will there be in 20 years? Uh, two. How can two people do what 16 people used to do? Um, short answer is that they can't. Are we living longer or shorter? Longer. So we're living longer, there are fewer workers, and more people are retiring. Those are the hard facts, yes, sir. Will you tell President Trump that if he ignores that, he can never get us out of debt? Yes, sir. Will you tell him that... The promise you made about Medicare and Social Security is going to lead to their demise. If you right there, I wanted to stop it there. Tell Trump if he does, if he ignores this, he'll never get us out of debt. There isn't anything that will get us out of debt now, ladies and gentlemen. Only thing that's left to do is to default. This is the only reason why you hear them talking about it. When there was an opportunity to get out of debt, they weren't talking about it at all. 
Now that they're insolvent, now's the time to tell everybody, oh, we got a debt problem that we need to work on. Why? Because then they realize that it will bring in a, a, a crisis situation that they will be able to manage appropriately. The time to think about, to have thought about getting out of debt was a while, a long time ago on a, on a national level from just their standpoint. But the time for you to do it is now, as much as you possibly can. Uh, else is going to lead, not only as they said, is going to lead to the demise of the taxpayer, it's going to lead to your individual financial demise. And you already know how people act when they are financially strapped. They lose their minds because the system has created dependency on the debt system. So here we go. We're going to finish this out. Yes, sir. Will you tell him that there's a bipartisan way to do this? It's been studied extensively. There is not. Cut line. Program, but saving the program. I'm familiar with that. Yes, sir. Yeah. Would you agree with me that for younger workers, they may have to work longer before they enter the program to save the program? I've already told my children to prepare for exactly that. Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill adjusted the age to retirement from 65 to 67 to save Social Security. Is that accurate? That is true. Do you think we need to look at adjusting the age yet again because we live longer? I do, yes, sir. Do you think people in my income level should be Good and could be means tested. Okay, I got it. I want a question. What do you think that the budget director told his children in preparing for this economic co collapse? Because that's what he told them. The economy is going to collapse and you need to prepare for it. And what do you think his children did? What do you think his children did? They've been preparing because he has been preparing because he knows what it, what it really means. He's not in the same position as, as most people. He's not in the same position where he does it. All he has to do is maintain the overall directive lie. He knows that it is a lie. So what is he doing? And what has he done? He's been preparing, and he told you that he's been preparing. Not only is he preparing, but what did he say? I told my children that they need to prepare for that. And what does that mean, ladies and gentlemen? That means that they are going to be able to take, seize the opportunities from the wealth transfer that's going to happen, the one that the, that the system has already created. So very, very important. But do we think that this is more important than watching the NBA playoffs? Do we think that this is more important than the, the, the housewives of, of this universe and of, of, of that solar system? Do we think that this is more important than the false reality shows that they have on? Do we think that this is more important than the engagements of nonsense that we all engage in while we're ignoring the essentials? And the essential is the protection of our sovereignty and our energy. If you're not protecting your energy, that means someone else is siphoning it. So, this is where we are. And if you'd like to get in on the conversation, don't hesitate. Give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025. I would ask you. What do you think that he was telling his, what do you think that he told his children? And what do you think that the message was given to you here? They are telling you that we're, in my opinion, the message here is that you won't be able to say that you didn't know. We told you, you just didn't seek it out. And one of the things that they always try to use is that ignorance is no excuse of the law. What is the law that they, they putting down? the economic law the economic law so I would ask you what did you hear what do you think that the preparation of these individuals that are talking about this from a so called national level what do you think that they know what do you think that they're doing 
Then I would ask, what do you think the rest of everyone else around you is doing? And is that gonna put us in a position of advantage or is that going to be a very difficult situation that we're all going to have to deal with in the future? I would say, do not ignore reality because you won't be able to ignore the consequences of us ignoring reality. This is a bit of truth that most people don't like to talk about because they're afraid of it. And your fears will enslave you as they always, always have. Your fears, my fears, our fears. Is what, this is what happens with them. They put us in a position to where we surrender instead of creating and maintaining a culture, a culture of survivability, sustainability, and prosperity. So this is where we are. If you'd like to get in on the conversation, give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025. Um, not sure if Scotty's back yet. Oh, we got time. So well, if there's someone in queue, um, let me know that you're there. If you had a question, a comment that you wanted to make, um, because it's kind of a little difficult for me to hear here. So go ahead and um, just uh, let me know that you're there, and we will definitely, definitely jump to that. So when you are, give us a call, 866-510-9025. So this was done, this was done in the beginning of the year. And as you start to see, everything is starting to completely, completely, in my opinion, start to collapse. There is a article, and this is why I would definitely, this is why it's so important for you to be prepared for this. For those of you that have close family members that you're in really good standings with, this should be the approach. You ain't got no choice. This is what we got to do because this threat is about to happen is more important than any darn thing else. If you are, if your spouse is not, or your, your mate is not seeing this, is not energized by this, is not motivated to action by this, that doesn't mean that you don't have to be. You still need to be. Because you can't make someone do something. If the great creator can't make you do something, what makes us think that we can make anyone do, do things? The best approach that you have to have is beyond the assistance of anyone else. The responsibility is yours because you have the overall wherewithal to deal with it. David. Yes, go ahead, Scotty. Yeah, I was just reading for you came on air that um, all of the websites and the stores that sell, um, you know, preparedness stuff said their, their sales are really increasing, man. Uh, but it's mostly due to yeah. fear of what could happen with Korea, which you was talking about yesterday, because a lot of people don't understand. Well, they should understand if you look at the um, the uh, bank, the, when the banks fostered that mortgage crisis, how it affected the global economy. If North Korea uh, just using this artillery, just regular artillery and short range rockets, man, they could do so much damage to the world economy just by by destroying Seoul and some of those ports in South Korea. Exactly. And destabilizing the Asian market. Exactly. I think it would destabilize exactly. the entire globe from what I've been reading, the global yeah, economy. Would. Yeah, it would. Because it's all interconnected. All of that is in, is purposely interconnected. It, it's it's not uh, um, it's not disjoined at all, and that's exactly right, Scotty. What, just with their just with artillery, just with their artillery barrages, and like you said, their their short uh, the medium range rockets that will totally destabilize the, completely the markets. And what do you think would happen to the overall the dollar? The, the many, many would run into the dollar temporarily, then they would abandon the dollar. They would run in. See, this is why it's so important. It's, it's like Scotty was just saying, he made a great point, that a lot of the preparedness stuff, their they're, they're people are getting prepared because of the North Korea thing. The North Korea thing may not guarantee we go off. I think it will. But see, well, I, I, 
I, I know that, and I've been talking about, so I'm going to change that. We've always been saying that we think that it's going to start in the South Sea of China, meaning Korea is a part of that as well. And when it does start there, what's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not prepared right now, you're going to be contending against the rest of the world and the rest of the country for resources. The, 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 the overall limited resources, and what do you think – the overall warehouses are going to do with their inventory. Do you think that they're going to meet the back order demands? No. What they're going to do is that they're going to gouge you by doing what? Suppressing the overall outflow of inventory even more. Because what happens when there's a high demand and a, and a, 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 a low supply, what happens to the overall price engagement? It explodes. So well said, Scotty. Hey, so, so there, true. There's uh, um, one other yeah, thing. There's one other thing. Austerity measures here in the United States, I believe, will be well. They already been slowly implementing them, I believe, over the past yeah. maybe 15 years or so. Uh, but if this right. corporate tax rate of only 15 percent goes through, what Trump is talking about, he wants they won't. Man, you think you we, this country is in debt now? Man, just if that was <laughs> yeah. to happen, wow. Yeah. And you know what, Scotty, I'm glad you brought that up because also, remember, right now there are more stores going out of business than there are all of the uh, uh, combined from 2007 and 2008 before the last economic uh where the everyday person saw that, oh, there may be an economic problem. And I remember in 2008, it just came up out on most people. They could see the housing market, oh, something there, it's not good, it's not good, it's not good. And they didn't even really see, and then all of a sudden, it's like, uh-oh, I guess we got a major problem because they were following the propaganda of mainstream news. There are more stores going out of business than there were in 2008. The overall uh, uh perpetual motion of store closures is greater than in 2008 and the crisis hasn't even been full blown for the everyday person to see it. This is going to, as Scotty said, the austerity measures have been in place for a very long time. When they start telling you know, and it's so funny is that you get austerity but you better still pay your taxes. You get austerity but you still got to go to work. You get austerity, but you still have to have um, service your debt. Because when you don't service your debt and, and you have a, a, a debt problem, what happens? They won't give a darn about you. They'll throw you and everything you have out on the street. So the, and the importance in the, in this and coming upon you to do what? To ensure that you have in control of your energy and the assets that you've acquired from using and expending that energy. We're getting ready to go to a commercial break. If you'd like to get in on the conversation, definitely give us a call, Brother Braggs, if you would, at any time, jump in. Um, and if there's a, a call, I think we have a caller in queue because I could kind of hear someone wasn't quite sure. That might have been Scotty. Uh, if there is, um, just say excuse me. Um, and once we come out of the commercial break, we'll go right to you. You're listening to Tando Radio Show brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. And we'll be right back after this quick commercial break. since 2008, providing new black media for the masses.
Okay, welcome back, everyone, to Tando Radio Show. You're listening to Black Talk. I'm excuse me. You're listening to Tando Radio Show, brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. I'm your host, Dave from LA. If you would like to get in on today's conversation, don't hesitate. Give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025, and hit star star. We'll see you in Q, and we'll definitely bring you up. I think my brother, Brother Braggs, is there. Brother Braggs, you there? Yes, sir. I'm here, Dad. What's going it's on, yourself. Brother Braggs? How's everything doing? I, I, I know... It's noisy around here. That's why I was trying to be quiet, Dave. My, my, my yeah, neighbor yeah, was no, alarm no, more... Could. And then when I go in the house, I got these no. dogs and heat. It's some more noise. I'm going to go upstairs. Give me one yeah, yeah. Going all the way upstairs. No, you're, you're good, Brother Braggs. You're good. So if you want to jump in at any time, just um, just let me know. And, um, you know, just just jump in because it's so, so important. Um, yeah, and I know when, when you have, um, you know, your dogs, when they get, they're getting, you know, real no, noisy and rowdy, you got it. They, they love when you talk, man. They get They get going. They drive, they drive me crazy when I'm on the phone, man. Forgive me. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That that's okay. If you can go to an area, or uh, if you just need to mute yourself, that be that's okay too. Yeah, I'm gonna mute myself for a minute. I'm gonna go to another area. Give me a minute. Okay. Give me a couple okay, minutes. Cool. I'm gonna mute myself, Dad. Okay, no problem. Uh huh. All right. So my man, brother Brad. Uh, so, if you'd like to get in on today's conversation, don't hesitate. Give us a, a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025, and hit star, star, and we will see you in queue, and we'll definitely bring you up. So, very, very important to engage in that. All right, so there's a couple of things that um, we need to actually talk about, but, of course, we would definitely like to talk to you. Give us a call. and think it's very critical, especially for what's going on in the world, that we strategically place ourselves and prepare ourselves for what's happening. This, this overall economic system is going to, in my opinion, is going to definitely uh, go through contraction and go through a, a, major economic, a major economic failure. And it's going to be like no other economic failure in the past. It's not going to be like the Great Depression. It's not going to be like um, anything else because the variables are, are way higher. And the thing is that I think it's important that you prepare yourself and as much as you possibly can. It doesn't matter how much you have or, or as, so, as so many people like to, to, to say how little they have. That's not the that's not the, the real con concern. The real concern is that you start to position yourself and your family to be able to withstand this as much as you possibly can. And if you are able to uh, strategically place yourself and, and most importantly, you'll be able to place yourself so that opportunities will come, uh, come along that will actually uh, uh, give momentum and to assist your overall economic position. And a lot of us don't see that because we've never been through a real economic crisis on a sovereign level. We've been through our own individual economic crisis. Yes, those things hurt a lot. But just imagine when the overall system, and as I was saying before, one of the things that as supply, as the supply and demand of goods become uh actually called upon because there are a lot of people that are that are cash heavy they have more means um, than than others and when those individuals see that there's a major problem they're going to be buying the necessary staple goods in bulk and they're going to you're not going to be able to compete with the overall general outpours just like a, a store that's being you know a, it's just like a Black Friday is is Black Friday is going to be every day for everything and there's only going to be a, a limited amount of supplies and the, and the overall supply chain is going to have the plausible deniability to say you know we don't have anything because uh, you know the, the trucks didn't get out and everything else so very very important that we don't allow this to adversely affect ourselves and our family the way in which it will if we do nothing about it you you, this isn't anything that you can ignore because it won't, it, it won't really matter, nor will it care that you are ignoring it. It is just going to be a part of your painful economic demise 
by having that type of mentality. And that's what we want to prevent here. Some of the things that you should be thinking about doing is, one, establishing a preparedness group among yourself and your friends and your family members where you are right now. That's number one. Then from that, um, realizing and, and coming to, to grips with what are the things that you can do before, and you want to do that while you still have the ability to acquire the necessary things that, that, are, that are going to be essential in the future and, not be, and to minimize the overall lack of resources. Very, very important because, as I was saying, the prices of things, it's going to go up. You're not going to get paid anymore. If anything, you're going, wages are going to be cut. And when those wages get cut, the overall, the, the purchasing power of the dollar is going to be going down. It's not that the price of anything is going up. It's just that your dollar, you can't buy a pack of gum for one quarter anymore. You won't be able to buy milk at the current price that you're buying it at. They're going to tell you you need to give up more cash in order to get that that asset. That is going to be extremely painful to many. Extremely painful. And it's it's something that is avoidable. All it takes is a little due diligence. All it takes is a little commitment. And it really takes you know, it doesn't take a little commitment. It requires a lot of uh, 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 a very significant commitment, a, a commitment to yourself and to your family. That's the commitment that it really requires. And it, it takes planning. And you need, and the best way to plan is when you're able to plan from a position of not needing those assets right now. Very, very important. So if you'd like to get in on the conversation, give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025. Then hit star star. We'll see you in queue, and we'll definitely bring you up. We are in a position, we are at a crossroad to where, in my opinion, these are some of the last months, possibly the last few years, and it takes a while to prepare. If, any, if you talk to anyone that's been preparing, because the, the thing about preparing is that you still have to service your debt. You still have to maintain your quality of life, your standard of living. There are things that you still have to do, so your overall cash exposure to preparing is going to be minimal. But it's better to have a long, pro, uh, a prolonged uh, um, acquiring of assets that you're going to need than having to have a crisis because there's only so much that you're going to be able to acquire with the, with the few purchasing power dollars that you have. And then not only that, what access do you really think that we will have once this overall uh, global war kicks off or the, the, the global military uh, confrontations start to ramp up where the ATM machines all of a sudden will be cut, cut off. The, 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 um, the payment centers will be cut off. The credit cards, the credit processing, the payment processing centers will be cut off. The bank's hours will be cut short and everyone in the world will be at the bank trying to withdraw their cash and the banks will only say you can only get uh, this much or that much of cash, how many, how many resources do you think that you really will be able to acquire in that type of environment, in that type of financial conditions? It is going to diminish it. This is why preparing requires an early eye instead of a hasty run, a hasty, stress, stressful run. It's not a sprint. So, these are the reasons why. So wherever you are, if you are a listener of Tando Radio Show, it is really, really important. One of the most important things that you could do right now is to, to prepare for the overall worst scenario. We've given you many, re, uh, uh, many um, we've done many shows. We've, we've given the articles. We've done the, the videos. We've We've given you the, the information right there in front of you for you to properly leverage yourself and your family. Now the rest is on you. 
for some of you that have been doing some things? What, what's some of the, the, the problems that you are experiencing that you can share with everyone else? Because by you sharing that, that helps someone else because you remember that someone else actually helped you in this whole thing, even though you may not think that they did. Really, it is, and it's a collective prudence that we have to have towards each other. If you're finding that in one area or that or, or this area that, that they're not be, you're not able to acquire things as easily, or that you can't find these things anymore, well, talk. Let's talk about it here, so that maybe that someone in another part of the country says, "Oh, we got plenty of that here." And these, you know, this is what was happening. You can go and get it here. That is a collective prudence that we have to have. But we've been taught not to trust and not to engage in that type of uh, economic procurement because it works. What we've been doing is that we have been taught to be our, our, the overseers or the masters of the economies best slaves to in, ensure that no one gets anything and that they require to, the overall generosity of master. We've been taught those, that type of thing. So I hear that we have a, a caller in the queue. Um, I'm not quite sure if that's Brother Braggs or not. Uh, Brother Braggs, is that you or is that um, another caller yes, that sir. Would, would, has a question? Uh, I, I believe that might be me, Dave. Yeah, yeah, that's you. That's you, brother, brother Brad. And I, and I was just going to say that what we what we kind of witnessing is uh, kind of the destruction of uh, white insanity, which most people call white supremacy. They're attacking the dollar. It's a different kind of war. They're attacking the dollar to put these people in their place because they realize the center of their power is the dollar. So you've got the gold standard coming in, and it's going to shake up everything. People are not really taking this stuff seriously because it's not on the news. If it was on the news of the basketball game, they would take it seriously. But because it seems so abstract, so unbelievable, they didn't pay any more attention. That's all I had to say on that, Dad. Yeah, and that's so true because the the changing of the economic system, the, the actually the the U.S. will be forced to respond to the overall loss of confidence that the world will have. But you know, it's so funny and it's, it's I mean, it's not funny, but it's, what's so discouraging and, and so painful is that we here in the United States still have, and the everyday people, especially within our community, we still have all in, in, in confidence in the U.S. dollar. And that is going to put us in such a unattainable position. The rest of the world is losing confidence, but we're not. So what is the, U, what is the U.S. banking system and what is the U.S. Uh, economic system going to do? Since you haven't lost confidence in it, here is all the dollars that you could ever have, but it won't buy a darn thing. Our community is going to have so many because they're going to be the bearers of all of the, the debt default, the brunt of the economic default. When we won't be the one saying, I don't want that. Don't give me that worthless piece of paper. You have to give me something else uh, of real means. And how do you do that? You don't do that in the economic collapse. You do that before it happens. You do it when they're asking the wrong price for assets that are going to actually be able to be beneficial to you and your family. Brother Braggs is exactly right. We're not aware of this because it's not being pushed. Yes, go ahead, brother. Check that dollar through history. That dollar got Lincoln killed. That dollar, that dollar has <clears throat> done so much as it moved through history. That dollar got Lincoln killed. 1913. The states get taken over 1933. It's, 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 the, the gold standard is extinguished, and they take away your gold and your silver. So follow this dollar. This dollar got Kennedy killed. He reestablished the gold and silver. It's still a law, still on the books. But immediately after his death, the next week, they canceled all the, the things that he had. The coins he was putting in circulation, the gold and silver, silver certificate, dollar bills, and they canceled all that. So you follow this dollar through history. This dollar has been the bane of, of many people's existence. Uh, if you if you track this this dollar this economic monster around the world, for instance, when the Europeans come out of Europe, you got the Western Europeans, you got the Eastern Europeans. So they go around the world in different directions. 
one bunch of Europeans go up into India, all around the Mongols, and they conquer these people. The other ones come over to the Americas, and they conquer the indigenous people in America. Now, mind you, these people are all conquering melanated people all around the world because they broke out with the firearm. They're going into places where people are highly civilized. They practice the religion of Mahat, so they have moral standards that are written across their hearts. They don't need guns and weapons because they're in tune with nature. They're in tune with spirituality, with true spirituality. That's how they were able to build great civilizations around this whole world, these melanated people that look like you and I, that are indigenous to every land that we stand on, every land we stand on all the time. We match the dirt. We match the earth. Remember, our mothers come from the earth. Therefore, the land is our mother also. That's all I'm saying on that for now. Peace, man. Yeah, and you know that's that's so true. And you know, one of the things is that what we have to do is that we've been addicted to this this debt instrument, and we're gonna have to break our addiction. And there's gonna ha- be there's gonna be a real drug withdrawal that we have to go through. There's gonna have to be a a, a rehabilitation. There is going, and the overall drug withdrawals are going to be extremely painful when the overall, when, when, when we've been so addicted to it and the body no longer has that drug that has been fueling its overall chemical demise, when it no longer has that, the body is not going to be functioning correctly. And as it not functions correctly, because it's not getting that, that synthetic, unnatural, chemical in, in inducement, it is going to start to shake, quiver, and its, and its functions are going to be changed. There is going to be a drug withdrawal from the dollar that we're going to be going through, and it is going to be the, a very, very painful shake. The key to this whole thing is to wean yourself from this now. Yes, go ahead, Brother Brian. I was going to say, Dave, when you follow that dollar, that dollar created World War One. that dollar created World War Two. That dollar front the Titanic. That dollar created Israel. That just follow that dollar. Mm. Man, if you follow that dollar, the Civil War was fought over that dollar. It wasn't fought over slavery per se. It was fought over who was going to be the slave. Understand and that? Ooh, that brother Brad, that's to exactly that so thing. true. Who was going? Who to was going to be the slave? They were, they were equal opportunity slavers at that point. You see, they don't teach you this in history, so you're going to hear this from people like me and Dave. Normally, you wouldn't hear this, but Dave has asked me to speak truthfully, and I will, about the things that I know. Now, everything I speak on is for educational purposes only. I dig deeply into books to find these things that I find. So I'm sharing what I find, freely. And, and some of these things, it, it, it'll be shocking, but hopefully it'll be shocking enough to plant seeds to make you do research. This planet was governed by a high morality called my art all over the world. Whether you go up into the Philippines, whether you go up into India, you had Hindu, you had these priests. These priests were Morris priests. These priests, these Morris priests came from the Egyptians. They took this knowledge, this understanding all over this world. That's why you find great edifices of pyramids that people that look like you and me, the melanated beings of this planet. Now, I don't know. I know about the Anunnaki, but I can only speak on things that I understand. The Anunnaki is over my head. I understand a lot about that, too, but it's over my head, so I really won't speak on it unless I'm speaking with Dave and we go back and forth, and if there's any misunderstanding, he'll correct me. So I won't speak on that like that. But what I will tell you is that we come from the greatest people that ever existed, second to none, and all this foolishness about going back to Africa. You can go to Africa if you like. Nothing wrong with Africa, but you're standing on home turf right here. If you go to Africa, you're going to another man's home. Now you're infringing on somebody else's sovereignty. So just remember, you've been miseducated to look to Africa. There's nothing wrong with that. But Africa's right here where you stand. Pyramids all over this mofo. We come from great people. And I don't want to get on the show, about it. I, 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 I'm feeling myself getting emotional. I don't, I don't deal with emotion anymore. So whenever I feel myself getting emotional, you're going to see me shut down. See, we also we must balance <laughs> our emotions. Our emotions give people power, and our emotions can give people power over us unless we control our emotions. 
That's another so true. So, so yeah, that's another that's another show by itself, brother Braggs, and that's one that we need to discipline. And that's what brother brother Davis has on Wise Wednesdays and everything else. And uh, brother Davis, um, if you'd like to chime in b- uh, before we get out of here today um, on what uh, tomorrow's show is going to be about, we're greatly appreciated. It's just so much that brother Braggs said that's so true. You know, uh, it, it's really high time that we position ourselves because it's so true that that this is. This is all continents were anchored to the uh, to the, the African continent, the the original continent continent. So this is all a part of it. And and the thing is that right now where you are, it's always, it always will be your home. Else, so we got another we got another caller that's in queue. I'm not quite sure. Maybe Brother Davis may not be. I'm not quite sure, uh, but. Uh, Whoever just chimed in, um, if we would just say your name and what is your question or comment, we'd greatly appreciate that. Thank you. It is always good to hear the voice of a friend. It is always good to hear the voice of a fan. friend. Brother Davis, what's going on? Brother, you have an excellent show tonight, and I'm going to tell you something. I've been thinking about a lot of different things to present on tomorrow night's show, but one of the things that I've definitely decided to focus on is what is called the sinking place. And the sinking place is that area in which people don't identify they're there. Matter of fact, Harriet Tubman spoke about it when she said, when they told her, you freed many of slaves. And she said, I would have freed many more if they had just realized they were slaves. So that's the right. sinking place that we'll speak about. But let me end, uh, and that will be tomorrow night's show, but let me end my monologue by repeating something from a, uh, a movie that you all pick up on, and it goes like this. We got some rough, rough times ahead of us, but in order for us to get a buy on beyond it, we have to shed our fear of it. For 400 years, we have been trotted on and manipulated. For 400 years, we have been given laws in which we had to follow. For 400 years, we have been killed and destroyed, but beyond all of that, we must understand that we are still here. The first chosen are still here. I look forward to you seeing you tomorrow night on the tomorrow night show. Remember, it's about the sinking place. And Dave, excellent show as usual. Brother Davis, boom. You know, I, what, I love when, when Brother Davis, Sister Davis, uh, Brother Braggs and, 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 and Roz and, and Jerry and, and, and Mel and and Deborah and, and everybody that calls in, they always drop, you know, you know, the first family out of Atlanta, uh, they always drop major bombs here. And that is so true. It is so true. So why is Wednesday tomorrow? And this is what we've always been uh, uh, trying to, to perpetuate is for, for you and for I and for us as a community, but be prepared and where we are to reestablish what our culture truly is and so that we no longer follow the destructive fads of someone else's agenda. That should be actually coursed by you and I. So looking forward to that tomorrow uh, with Wise Wednesday with Brother Davis, as always, um, can't miss, can't miss. And it's, you know, Brother Bragg was talking about how this, where we are, is our home. And this is so true, and, and, and we, I think that it's so important that we emphasize that because your home is where your roots are, and your roots go deep into the overall mantle of, uh, of this earth known as Tara and spread out, and you actually are, are bringing life energy to this land, and this is why it resonates a certain way, and, and we have restricted ourselves to the plantation of what we've been taught because we've been taught and that's all that we've ever known. We have never ever really known true sovereignty and self-determination but it is so deeply seated in our DNA we can still resonate with that frequency to know that this ain't it and that we need to reestablish what is the truth. This is why the mental illness, this is why the physical illness, this is why we are wandering in our own home. Because our home 
is where we are sovereign and it's here, but we are displaced by choice and by will and through deception. That definitely has to be broken because there is no place on this planet that is not yours. There is no place on this planet, what I mean by yours, where you can't have a, a, a collective resonance and that you can be in mutual agreement with the living environment that you are sharing with. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, Scotty. Going back is that to, Scotty? Hey, going back to what Brother Brass was saying. Now, this may be true among other people, and it's just I'm not aware of it. But why is it always Afro-descended people that's always talking about leaving here and going somewhere else? Other people know where, know, they know their line. They know, like, they may come from Scotland, they may come from Ireland, or their ancestors may have come here from England or, or from wherever. But I don't never hear them talking <laughs> about abandoning nothing and, and leaving nothing to nobody. <laughs> they they stealing a continent and a land from the people who they taught that came from Africa. They stealing your birthright. They, it's all in the Bible. Look, everything they've done, they've done with correspondence. That's why I tell you, everybody read. Everything they've done is written down. All you got to do is be patient enough and be diligent enough. You're going to come up across the mother load eventually to, to liberate your mind completely because it's all in books. They can't, they can't keep it away from you. Look. But, hey, but Brother Braggs, go here. Brother Braggs. I'm just going to do this quickly because I usually don't go here. When you start looking at these Moors, man, remember this. King Leopold used the Moors to murder the people, the Congolese. Two times these dictators, these European dictators used the Moors' armies to murder our people. When I say our people, I'm talking about melanated people all around the world. Remember, right. this was a, a global conspiracy to take land from melanated people people wherever they were indigenous all around the world so these people came out with that in mind they're never going to teach you that so you standing on your own land but you taught you came from africa now the brothers in africa they know you're not from africa they know that you kindred but you're not from africa because they know the clans that's from africa but we've been taught by people who trying to steal our birthright that we from africa we're not from but, africa. but brother brands before i read before i started studying this kind of stuff I always had the attitude that look, we came over here, we built this. I, I mean, whether we came over here or we was indigenous, it's never here, here or there. But you know, right. we've been here for for however long and have played a key role in developing this country, defending this country, bleeding for this country. So I'm like, why why would I leave this country that my ancestors then developed? and fought for and and say oh somebody else can have it I just don't get that man and then we also act like you know if we go to Africa all our problems gonna be solved when they got a plenty of problems on a in Africa you don't, they, they know you don't belong there they know who belong there you don't, they know your land is over here see, see guess what? when you go start looking at history from, from, from the European side and come to America when oh, I wait 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 hold on Brother Rack, hold on one second, because the point that you're about to make is just too important to be interrupted by the commercial break. So we're going to jump in the commercial break because, Scotty, man, you, you killed it, and Brother Bragg is killing it because um, I definitely want to, because it's so, so true, and I want to make sure that that is uninterrupted uh, and we come out of this commercial break. Listen, everyone, we're getting ready to go to a commercial break. If you'd like to get in on the conversation, don't hesitate. Give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025, then hit star star and for the brothers and sisters that are actually from africa no we love you we, we understand but what we're talking about we're not talking about you we are talking about ourselves and here being here and understanding that this is what we have built this is our home and the lies and the deceptions that have been pushed upon us move us out a land that's been conquered that's what this has all have been always been about so you're listening to tando radio show we'll be right back after this quick commercial break Podcasts and live program scheduling, visit us on the web at blacktalkradionetwork.com. All 
Okay, welcome back, everyone, to Tango Radio Show, brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. If you'd like to get in on the conversation, get us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025. And today's show is everything else is about you becoming sovereign, self-determining, and controlling of your energy and control and the energy that you control, the, the overall payment for your overall expenditure of, of energy should be in the form of accumulating and acquiring assets that you can control as well so that you will not be kicked off of a land that your that your that your ancestors had had communion with so that you will not be uh kicked off a land that is actually yours and you know one of the things that from the historical american view is that they say that you have to be careful that not to be kicked off of a land that your ancestors have conquered this is exactly it. It has been conquered. Hey, and this I is know why that. it's so, so important. I know yeah, the you answer. You got to know you've been conquered, though. What, what you were saying earlier, what, what, what Brother Davis was saying, they would have freed more slaves if they had known that they were enslaved. They didn't know it. Our situation yeah, they didn't know it. been taught certain things, so we don't know. I'm not kicking nobody. Right. I'm not kicking the Moors. I'm not kicking the Hebrews. I don't kick our people because, see, we've been miseducated, so we fight amongst each other. I don't have time to fight That's with right. people that look like me. It's a burning building. We got time to fight it. Should we get out? Hey, you know hey, brother Brad. Yes, sir. I had an answer to the question that I asked. It just came to me during the break. This started with Martin Delaney. And I'm not saying Martin Delaney was wrong. For those who don't know who Martin Delaney is, he is the father of black nationalism, not right. uh, Marcus Garvey. Uh, Martin Delaney was Marcus Garvey before Marcus Garvey ever stopped stepped foot on this continent. Okay, and and so um, coming out of the Civil War, Martin Delaney came to the conclusion that black people ain't never going to be treated right. So let's go to Africa, and he actually did establish, did move to Africa and establish a colony over there. And then we then later, you know, um, Garvey came here from Libby. where Libby, did he right? come from? Libya. Where did he come from? Uh, um, Jamaica. 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 Yeah. Jamaica and, and and so then he came here and he was taught he was preaching the same thing. But my perspective has always been influenced by by Malcolm X. I never heard Malcolm X say, Let's leave and go to Africa. He said, Let's build bridges to Africa. Yes. To, that's a big difference than leaving here. Us. He told you Plymouth Rock landed on us. We were here already. Right, that's right, right. Plymouth right. Rock landed on us. Right. So, so he, I, he, I, he, I answered he, my own question. It came Can to I me. Answer that? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, brother, brother Davis. What they were establishing at that time, they didn't realize was Pan Africanism. It was to be able to take your skills to your neighbor help him develop the same thing, but not give up your land, be able to come back home and reestablish a connection in which you both can be fertile in terms of production. We have failed to realize the most important thing that makes us a people is that we can apply ourselves and our instructions to anybody that looks like us and expand whatever it is we work on. It's just that we have gotten away from that. And Brother Scotty is right. That the brother who was speaking about, who's the first real outspoken nationalist, was speaking in reference to the same thing, uniting us ourselves and our communities so that we can build to a greater structure. It's just the it's history reflects on it different ways at different times. And Brother Malcolm said when he came back to the United States from uh, Mecca, he said, to believe that you can achieve is to look to a tunnel, but to expand your vision means you can incorporate all those things that can become a part of the whole, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to build so that we can bring all of those things that are a part into the whole. And this is why, ladies and gentlemen, it's so important in the things that we're facing so that we won't continuously be conquered over and over and over again. It's so important that you take a vested interest in yourself, your family, and our community, and to establish some of the necessary staples for you to be able to maintain your overall sovereignty and self 
determination. And one of the things that happens is that the land is continuously conquered. The land is at continuously taken and seized. The land and the environment is continuously put in a perpetual motion of war. And when that happens, every time a war happens, there is a what? The victims of war and prisoners of war. And this is what we have become here. But go ahead, Brother Brad. I was just wanted to interject before I got off track. He was talking about Libya. Remember this. Hence comes the 13th and 14th Amendment. These, this adhesion contract that created corporations, that made people in the corporations. At the same time this was happening, Supposedly they freed the slaves But you got to remember what really happened You had Benjamin Franklin and his cohorts Stealing the constitution In the country This is what they're never going to teach you That's why we are at, where we're at today With all the confusion about who's what and what what Now I don't really want to go into a long diatribe About who, who uh, Pulled the strings and put a, a lot of things in motion But this is where we come to this 13th and 14th amendment The creation of Libya Taking indigenous people off of the continent, the people that didn't go were not emancipated. They became property of the government, the United States government, and an adhesion contract, 14th Amendment. Now you're a 14th Amendment citizen, so you belong to the United States government. Now, I don't know if you can follow me on that, but I just told you a whole bunch. And I really hate to get into this because, see, it's, it's abstract. It's, it takes so much to understand what these people have done because, oh, what a web we can weave when we try to deceive. So somebody got to go behind me and follow the web. Man, so, so true. So, so true. And here it is. Um, you know, it, it, it's critical that we understand these things, and, and it's high time for us to reposition ourselves so that we are not continuously in a position of disadvantage so that the land that has always been a part of your culture can return and it can be redeemed. It can be redeemed. There is also the redeem the redemption of us spiritually, physically, and 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 mentally, but it's also the redemption of the land as well. Because when someone conquers your land, what do they do to the overall land itself? They exploit it. They they actually it, they devastate the whole thing. They take more than what's old and what's due. They 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 actually take take uh, resources from it that actually cause the land to go into famine. This is what raping happens. Land. This has always been the raping mantra. Land. The mantra. Yeah, ex exactly. The raping and pillaging of the land because it's been successfully done among the people. So. This is where we all should be in a position to where we say that it starts with me, with my family, and first with myself, then with my family, and then with the overall community at large. And by doing that, then we'll, we will be able to foster a true sense of sovereignty that has been missing us, but has been right here at our at our beckoning call for a very, very long time. We just have to seize it. And if we don't take that opportunity to seize it, it will be another opportunity that would have that has been squandered. Unnecessarily so. So the choice is always ours and will continue to be ours. You have to know who you are first and foremost, regardless of what institution has told you, what your name is, what your status is, what your social security number is. That is not true. The truth is how you resonate is who you are. Your sovereignty and how you execute your overall free will and the energy that goes along with that free will determines who you are and what you shall become and what traditions and culture you will establish as legacy and prosperity for those that you have yet not named. And this becomes the eternal, the eternal lifestyle that you pass on. And, you know, Scotty had asked, you know, why does, he asked a great question, why are we the only ones that are willing to relinquish and forfeit what we have, have built? because that is the overall psychological conquering of the people. And he was absolutely right, because most of the people that come here and deal with different things, they don't have to deal with the overall overt conquering of their land. 
and conquering of their individual energy. So until we realize that no one can steal your energy, yes, they can try to deceive you and force you and everything else and threaten you with the, the loss of your overall sovereignty, but your sovereignty has to first be surrendered by you. And many of us have, through the perpetual motion of schooling and through the perpetual uh, domestic terrorism, we have surrendered ourselves to where we have become a prisoner of war. That's really how we engage in a relationship in this economy, engage in a relationship internationally, engage in a relationship with our neighbor and our family. We are at perpetual war. We are at a perpetual at each other's throat, a fight for survival. When we should be, instead of fighting for survival, we should be creating prosperity, sharing prosperity. And that can, that's no pipe dream that actually can still be actually obtained if we choose it to. As Brother Davis always said, what is your choice? What do you will to be? What do you believe and what are you going to energize to do? That shall, so shall you be. So I think it's very, very important that we look at everything that's going on. Yes, there are going to be some adverse times. But in that adverse time, if we actually prepare ourselves accordingly, we will be able to seize the opportunities that will bring back our true capabilities and our true talents. You know, yesterday, and I want to say this before we get out of here, yesterday I was at a, and I usually don't do this, I, I was invited by a, a, a business partner to uh, go to a town hall meeting with some politicians that were going to be uh, actually, you know, running for election and everything else, and I'm like, and, and they laughed, I said, I know, they said, we know that's not, you know, that's not your style and everything else, but there's some people who want you to meet uh, that's going to be there. And so I went. And one politician said that the reason why people are homeless is because they choose to be or they want to be. And I couldn't, wasn't surprised. But there, while we were there, was a table of people that had, that were at one time homeless and they were shocked at what was said. But you know what was the most disappointing thing? I didn't hear one person challenge that malevolent energy at the end of the day or challenge him while I was there. I waited till it was all over and I let him, uh oh, I let him have it. Sorry about that. And I was just surprised that we have been so indoctrinated that whatever the politicians, whatever the system says, we just be quiet. They want us to go vote. We're going to go vote. We want to go get more votes for them. We'll go get them the more votes while they continue to follow a system of our own demise. There is no political solution for moral problems. The, all, all, the actual political system has created the moral embasement debasement, excuse me. So just amazing how things work. So uh, I don't know if we have any other callers. And so I just want to sincerely thank, you know, Brother Braggs, Brother Scotty, Brother Davis. And it's so, so important that we have these engagements, but more important that we energize. It's one thing to talk about things, but the creation of our solutions is what has to happen. Our energy has to solve all of our problems. What are we energizing? What are we creating? What are we doing that is going to be the solution itself? You can't just speak a solution into existence. It has to be spoken and then energized into the reality, into the full fruition of its capability. And that's where we have faltered. That's where we have decided that Maybe it's just enough for us to vote. Maybe it's just enough for us to ha hear a good speech. Maybe it's just enough for us to do the un semantic things that really don't change anything. That should be enough as we wait. The system has taught us to wait on a savior, to wait on a leader, to wait on the, the prosperity, to wait, to wait, to wait, while they take, they take, they take. 
Those that wait are always the victim of those that seize. So I would say, what are we waiting for? Create your own preparedness groups because you're going to need that preparedness group. You are either going to do it out of strategy or out of necessity and hate. It's better to strategize and, ha- and, and start it early so that you'll be able to seize on the opportunities that will be coming before then. Brother Braggs, if you have anything you want to take us out or to add, or Brother Davis. Yes, sir. I definitely. Just want to say a couple of things, and I'm going to go to the gong. Everybody, you should plug into the King Alpha Plan, Rex 84, Agenda 21. Read these documents, Google these documents, and read them. They're very sobering to the mind. You should know about the things that people think about us on a national scale. I'm going to the gong, Dave. Anybody else got anything? Let me know, Dave. Are you ready for me to Man, we always. So, all right, I guess there's uh, no one else in, in queue. So, brother, uh, we're going to get out of here just a little bit early because I almost crashed uh, because these – not and not meant to be driving like this. So I just want to say thank you all for listening to Tando Radio Show. It's never goodbye. As always, we'll see you later. And before you ask for a fortune, make sure to give one away. So needed. Establish your preparedness groups. Let's let's make that our business. Let's let that be our action. Let's let that be become our solutions to everything. The overall solutions to it all is within our all, all grasp. Much love, much respect, brother Bragg. If you would, if you would frequency us, establish the the, the high resonance of the frequency that we will so need to shatter and break the change of the bonds of our minds, of our physical body, and those that actually suppress our spirits. Much love, much respect. We'll talk to you soon. Peace. Peace, peace. Thirty-two Earth frequency, frequency of love. Peace. <laughs>